Leeds United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart, the team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Did you think the uh, video was ever going to start? <laughs> well, <laughs> good evening. I'm looking for it's been a good start. start. Oh my Where's god, we've been blighted, music? mate. We've been blighted, haven't we? Blighted. We, we have a we have a, a TV presenter on of the highest regard, and I'm making a right mockery of the show. But never mind. We'll, we'll style it out as we always do. So, welcome to episode 118 of the Talking Shut Podcast. 18. Obviously, 118, mate. 118. We've done about 150, I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's not bad. Um, but- Obviously, we'll be here about our fantastic sponsors, the guys at the Terrace, the guys at the Social Maze, and obviously the big hitters, the guys at the Athletic. And as you may have heard, if you're listening back on a podcast, we've got a, a very special guest tonight. Uh, it's not it's not Paddy and, it, and it's not Raggy, and neither Ben here. So it can only be the voice of the uh, presenting legend, which you mentioned earlier, uh, of Soccer AM fame, uh, amongst many other things. Uh, John Fenley, welcome to the show. Fen, Thanks are you? for having me, lads. I wondered who was coming on when you were talking about the, pre- the presenting <laughs> legend. I was, I was like, oh, hang on, I've got the wrong night here. Thanks for having me, lads. Thanks for no, having me. Uh, that's, that's a good effort. That's yeah, good it's... Effort. Uh, yeah, we're still broadcasting is quite a surprise, but, you know, we're, we're still here. Anyway, um, obviously, we are live, so a fair few people watching live. If you want to get any questions in for Fenners, then please do. Uh, if you're watching live, though, share the stream. Tell other people that we're alive and, you know, there's somebody who might be moderately entertaining opposed to us lot. Uh, and, and we'll get into it. Anyway, Fenners, um, while, while we get guests on, we generally like to ambush them with, like, a million questions to start with. Make them feel at home. So between um, Paddy and, and Young Ben, they, they knocked up a, a bit of an icebreaker for you. So um, we're going to start with question one, if you're ready. It's, um, yeah. you're stuck in a lift for eight hours. Oh, Who would you want to yeah. be stuck with and why? Well, an electrician <laughs> would, be, <laughs> would be handy. That's what I would probably go for, an electrician initially. Uh, was Stuart Pearce an electrician? Yeah, he was. were, weren't he? Yeah. yeah. So you know, yeah, if you got, if you're going to go for an electrician of some repute who's got a little bit about him, and he likes his music as well as his football, so someone like Stuart Pearce. But um, I was thinking about this earlier. It's kind of like there's like a million people. You know, there's different genres. So uh, you know, footballers, sportsmen, uh, all kinds of people. So you know, if I'm going to rattle through a few, if uh, if, if it was if it's somebody from the world of football, um, I'd probably go someone like. Maradona. I know it's a bit Route One. Um, I've been fortunate to, to, um, to, to, to speak to a lot of footballers, and I, I think I should pick people who I've not, I've maybe not met. So someone like Maradona would be brilliant. Um, the late great George Best. I think he would be, he'd be someone um, who, who would, uh, that you know, would while away the eight hours in there uh, quite nicely. Um, Martin Scorsese, perhaps. Uh, and Robert De Niro, and, and because he's only small, you probably get Joe Pesci in there as well. <laughs> you could probably have a, you know, you get them, get them all in there. Um, how big is this lift? I'm going to say, I'm just beginning I mean, to think this. I, I mean, I've, <laughs> in, in my head, I've got it's the one of lifts at work. Ah. And they're quite big. You know, it's not like a Debenhams. Yeah. It's not like one of those little Debenhams ones where you can't really get anyone in. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, um, Prince. Uh, what dead people in this lift, Fenners? <laughs> yeah, say. well, you know, I, 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 it did, uh, that did that did kind of dawn on me, but uh, yeah, yeah. But they're, 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 you know, they're, they're, I think they're all pretty, uh, they're all pretty interesting people. Yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, question two follows a similar theme, and I'm I'm beginning to think what Paddy and Young Ben talk about um, outside of our WhatsApp group. But you got to check into an hotel. 
and they've messed up yeah. your booking and there's only one room. Which footballer would you never share a hotel room with? Jimmy Bullard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I, missed, I missed this bit off. Why? I'm not even joking. Well, so Jimmy, God, God bless him. I, I love Jimmy. He's, he's, one of, he's one of my best pals and I've really you know, grown to love him over, over the years since I've got to know him. I, I first met him... Uh, I interviewed him when he was at, when he was at Ipswich. I think that's the first time. Um, if you remember when we were doing soccer and back in the day, he was he, he did this interview and he, he was in Peterborough and he kept he kept corpsing, he, he kept um, mucking yeah. his lines up, he kept doing, it. and we like absolutely battered it. We rinsed it and we got loads of mileage out of it. And he was always, you know, back then, I don't know, you, you know, you guys know what it's like, you know, Paddy, you play and and, and it, it's it's. You always say, oh, there's not a lot of personalities in the game. I don't believe I don't believe that for a minute. I think that it's very hard for, for them to, sh to show their personalities. But Jimmy was someone who did. Anyway, but he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fantastic person to be around, but for a short period of time, because if 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 he's if his concentration levels dip or um, or he you know he just he, if he just goes off off radar. He just he, he can turn into be a real pain in the backside. So, and if you say to Jimmy, the worst thing you can say to Jimmy. So let's say we're rehearsed on a Friday afternoon, and it's you know we've got ten minutes left, and we've got a lot to get through. Jim, can you just stop doing that? It's like that's the worst thing you can say to Jimmy. <laughs> and he, it's just it's just like and it just it just flicks a switch with him. So I've heard all kinds of stories from people that he's roomed with. Um, he, 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 uh, Danny Murphy asked asked him to um, if he could just cut his hair with the clippers. I mean, what are you thinking, Danny? He, asked <laughs> he basically shaved them. He shaved up the back there, and then the next day, before the game, they he, they coloured it in with with the black felt tip, <laughs> black felt tip. So yeah, he's just he's just a menace. He's, he's 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 a lovable rogue, and he always wants to have he always wants to have a wrestle. He always wants to have a fight and throw you about, and you know. Just, he, he seems he, like the type of guy where, as soon as your eyes have got to sleep, he's doing a practical joke. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him. I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't let him near my ho the hotel room. I, I would actually check into a different hotel <laughs> if he was in the hotel. Um, <laughs> Even if it was, you know, I'd just get myself in a in, in a in a little travel lodge or something like that. Yeah, because back in yeah. the day when you were playing, you used to feature quite a lot on Soccer AM, didn't he? Like when you were doing that Sky Sports thing where he'd pull his shorts up really high yeah. and cut around, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he's he's brilliant, and he's you know he, he didn't have it easy in his football career, and he I think he got to a point where he was like, I'm going to enjoy this, and he enjoys himself on the pitch, and um, he expressed himself, and I think he was playing. He, he, when he was happy on the pitch, he, he, you know, he was playing well. And so the two things sort of went hand in hand. And I think it's the same with him, whatever he does. You see him on a Saturday morning when he's in his element, he's loving it. You know, he's a star He's a star of the show. Absolutely, make no bones about it. Um, but this is a bit where you go, oh, no, fellas, you're really, you're, you're good as well, mate. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's, he's, he's brilliant. And he's, he's, he's such a great personality. You can still, but he still can do it as well. He yeah, can still, he can still, he, you know, out in the uh, in the John and he's uh, he's still got the magic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, question four. Then you're moving house, and you can only call one player to help you. Who would it be? Um, well, uh, I'm going to have to go with the beast, Adebayo Fenway. You know, because <laughs> you know, I know you're looking at me thinking, hey, he looks like he lifts a bit. He looks <laughs> like he does a bit. That lad, I don't. Uh, but, <laughs> The beast does, and I hate lifting things. I hate shifting things around. Um, rugs and whatnot, I'm all right. You know, I like I'm putting stuff, books, and you know, over in and whatnot. But heavy lifting, not for me. So I think I'd have to go with uh, with the beast. Yeah, he's a big. And, and finally, yeah, he's a he's a monster, like it. And finally, uh, Fenners, dream guest for Soccer AM. Oh dear me. Um, uh, it's, it's, I get asked this quite a lot, actually, and I've never got a really, a really good answer. Um, it'd probably be that I suppose you want them living, do you? No, we can have it then if you want. <laughs> Might not be a great guest, like, but yeah. 
I mean, um, I, 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 the bo boxers are always great value when they come on soccer. I am. So yeah. if I, if it was a footballer, right, I would go for somebody like um, Cruyff. I'd go for someone like Johan Cruyff. God rest his soul. Um, or or Zidane. Um, but I've I've interviewed Zidane, but I, it, I don't really feel like I've, it's counted because I basically sat sat there while I spoke to an interpreter and asked the questions. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's a really weird feeling because you don't feel like you've actually had a conversation with him. Mm. So you come away with it feeling like, oh, God, I was sat next to him and I wanted to ask him all this stuff and I couldn't do it. But someone like someone like Johan Cruyff, I love talking to people about football. I love talking to people who know a lot more about football than me, which is pretty much everyone who's ever played the game. So I love digging, I love like kind of scratching away at the surface, like peeling away at the onion and, and, and getting to the nitty gritty and asking why, why did that happen? So why did they do that? You know, and it's, it's hard because, foot, you know, if, if you're, if a footballer walks into a room, if I'm with a footballer and a, another footballer walks in, the two footballers start having a completely different conversation about football than they would with me because they kind of go, he's not a player, you know, and that is quite right. And I get it. And so they, they kind of, you know, they sort of play. They miss me out. They play the long ball, and and uh, and they, you know, they have that. They have that chat where you kind of. And that's why I, when I did used to do the show called the Fantasy Football Club, I used to love it because Merce and the guest would they'd really get into it, and I was just sort of perched on the edge, kind of like a voyeur, you know, just kind of looking in and, and listening to it all, and, and, and I loved it. So I think someone like Cry for what he did with the game, you know, what he what he did um, as a player, but also you know at Barcelona and. Uh, you know, got got them playing that that way, and and very you know very very opinionated and and spoke his mind. I think he would he would be he would be the one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Fenners, obviously, you've been a staple of our Saturday mornings, all of us, um, and for many other people up and down the country. But uh, so, what were your journey to to landing at Soccer AM to the John Arnarisa with Jimmy Bullard? How did you how did you end up there? So, um, those of those who are. Uh, of a more mature standing will might remember I, I used to work on soccer M a long time ago so i um i started i i, I came to soccer M in 1990 i think it was 96 um so i had um i basically had, i wanted to work in football you know that, that was my that was my ambition to work in football and you know when you when you realize that you know you're not good enough to play then I started thinking about coaching so I started doing some coaching at, at Scarborough football in the community with a guy called Ian Kerr and then um, at, at York City with a, a guy called Gordon Staniford who I'm sure you, so sure you know of um, so I was doing stuff like that I did my prelim and and, um, and uh, I was at St John's College in York and so I was I was doing bits of peace and then I was going to America and coaching out there so I, I was kind of really into the idea of coaching um, and then I got some work um, for the PFA, uh, delivering GMVQs, going into clubs and, and, and sort of basically teaching the YTSs, um, giving them something to fall back on in case they didn't make it. And, and it was great going to the clubs, but again, it just didn't really feel like it was the right sort of thing for me. And then I went to uh, Euro 96 and I worked as a volunteer at Ellen Road, um, ironically, and um, I just loved it. I loved it. I've been kind of a part of it, and uh, I think it, Spain and Italy were, were based. Uh, that, that some of their games were were at, uh, were at Ellen Road, um, and I just I just loved it. I just had a really good time, and, I, and these people were walking in, and you know, recognising some of the commentators, and I just it started me thinking about a career in in that side of it because I'd always I'd always wanted to be a commentator. You know, when you're a kid and you're running about and you're commentating, and I just I was obsessed with watching football on telly, but Back in those days, there wasn't really a lot. You know, you'd get you'd get your, your basic stuff. You'd get um, Saint and Greavesy on the ball, um, football focus match of the day, and then you'd get your Sunday Sunday lunchtime, which was the regional one. So you'd, I'd, you'd get a lot of Leeds games on there. Um, and I just I just um, I started writing off to I started writing off to Yorkshire Tynesies. Um, Granada, Sky, trying to get you know Sky had just kind of not not you know was in its formative years, and 
I, I got kept getting knocked back. It was really quite difficult to kind of get anywhere near any of these um, these places. So anyway, my mate, um, you a guy who works at Sky and said, look, I could probably get you in for a, a week's work experience. So I came down and I was doing some other stuff with a company called Club Call. I don't know if you remember Club Call. Yeah. Basically, if there's any any uh, kids listening in who don't know what it is, it was you would um, so you would ring up a phone line and it would have uh, all the news about the team and it would have like manager interviews and things like that. Um, and it was just it sounds a bit odd, but it was quite. I think it was quite popular. So, you know, you'd interview a manager and then they'd put it up on the on the, the, the recording wherever they, they used to house it and then you'd ring up and you'd sit and listen to, you know, whoever, whoever it was, you know, the manager at the what time. Is, what? And, yeah, and people, and you obviously you pay premium rate for it. So it was, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a good idea. And, but anyway, I did some work experience for them. Sorry, I'm really, it's a rambling story, but I'm going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I did some work experience for them. Um, Whilst I was down, in, whilst I was down in uh, in London, because I come down for a month basically to try and just chance my arm, they offered me a job, and I said, "Look, I don't, I, I really, I really want to do this work at this week at Sky. Can I go and do that?" And they were like, "Yeah, cool, go and do it, and see how you get on and whatnot." And then, and then, uh, bizarrely, someone got sacked at Sky, uh, which it, which wasn't nice, and. Uh, they needed someone on Soccer AM to kind of sort of fill in, just temporary. So I think, uh, so Tim Lovejoy was the producer at the time, producer and presenter. And um, I had this like, I had this really nice Henry Lloyd jacket and I had, my hair was quite, I actually had some bit of hair there and it was quite sort of long. And I thought, yeah, I was having myself as a bit of a, like a, an indie kid. And he saw my jacket in the air and he thought, who's it? Who's this? And he thought, is he a northerner? Because he had this thing and he was like, if you get a northern and you employ northerners, that, that all they haven't got anywhere to go because they don't know anyone in London and they haven't got any money, so all they do is spend the time at work. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what he wanted, and, that, and, and 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 you know we got chatting and we had interests, you know, music, football, clothes, and, and whatnot, and and then it just sort of fell into place, and uh, they offered, they, you know, I, I did a couple of weeks, and then they offered me a job as a a, you know, like a junior, and then kind of worked me, worked me way up, um, and I was there for about eleven years, I think, initially. Uh, then left for a couple of years, and then managed to, you know, come back to Sky and do a couple of other things before I ended up presenting Soccer AM because I was never really a, I was, I wasn't really a presenter. Like some some people say I'm not really a presenter now, but uh, I do. I was more, you know, I, I've always been a producer, and someone who used to do a bit of the you know comedy with a small c the sketches and, the, and we used to do the gags and things like that and you know so that was that was a big part of it and then that gave give you a bit of confidence to think you know I, I, I don't mind this I quite like this and then it was more of a it was more of a like um necessities and mother of invention really because when when I left and, and the thing that we were doing didn't work out I needed to get myself back doing something so I figured I want to do some interviews and things like that. So I kind of built my way up and I was doing stuff on Soccer Saturday. Did a, I did a quiz show called Take It Like a Fan, which was mm. going to games, um, just really kind of base. It was very um, spit and sawdust, one camera job, really hard work, but it was good laugh. You know, get to games every week, got to a load of different grounds for, you know, all the league grounds, which was brilliant. Um, so doing that and then Soccer Saturday stuff, which I loved. Um, and then it just opportunity came, came along, and it was you know it was just too good to turn down, lads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, there's a few people in the comments, Fenners. First commenting on your uh, top uh, jacket wearing and your style of jackets, um, but um, there's also a few in here on about how they had massive phone bills from Club Call and and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a bit of a serious note, how much do you think Soccer AM changed the outlook on football? The only reason I bring this up is because as a kid growing up in like, you know, the, the very early 90s, so, Soccer AM became a little bit something that weren't as, as serious as the games, if that makes sense. Where yeah, it, were like, it appealed to a bigger, bigger audience, a wider you know audience. I, do you know what I always thought about Soccer AM as well? Whether you were going to play football in the afternoon or you were going down to Ellen Road, 
it became part of your Saturday football yeah, ritual yeah. that you'd yeah. sit there with your dad and your brother or your family or your friends watching Soccer AM and then Soccer AM would finish and then you'd head off to the ground and do whatever then. It became part of, part of your football day. I think the, the, the difference, if you think back then, is you know there weren't as many platforms. And so if you were looking for something um, a little bit different and you love football, then Soccer AM was this thing that you could, you could get up and you could turn it on, you could go and have a brew and you come back and it was still on. And then you could go and, you know, if you wanted to, you could go out and wash the car and it was still on. And then have a bit of snap, a bit of snap, look at me talking. <laughs> yeah, a bit of snap, a bit of bit. Uh, you could have, you know, you, you, because it was on for four hours initially, mm. you know, and it used to start at seven. When I first started, it started at seven till 11. And then it went from, I think it was 8 to 11, then it was 9 till 12. And it's gradually sort of been, been whittled down for whatever reason. But it was, you had like, you know, Saturday morning, you had, it was, if it was, it was a captive audience really, you know, and it was, it was, it was live. So it, and it, and it was, you know, it was very experimental because Tim had, Tim had worked on the big breakfast. So he'd, he'd come across, because football, you know, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of negativity towards football uh, back then, which sounds a bit weird now. But you know, there was, there was obviously, you know, issues with with hooliganism, uh, you know, and and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't sort of, it wasn't the the the, it's still an amazing game, you know, but it wasn't it wasn't deemed by the, a lot of the press and and people. I think is, uh, uh, you know, a great a great product, a great you know thing, and I think that. I think soccer AM. I think it's with with Sky, it, it sort of changed. Um, you know whether you liked it or not. You know it, it, it was kind of it was really promoting football. It was really going. This is this is great, and I, you know hyping it, yeah, but promoting it and uh, uh, and, and soccer AM was. You know the, the beauty of soccer AM was we were just we were just and are you know we are and still just la- you know lads and. We were working in the we were working in the office. We were doing the stuff, but then we were getting put on on telly to, you know, have the Mickey taken out of us, or you know, doing this this sketch or whatever. And because because we weren't putting ourselves up there as, oh, we're really funny. You know, we're comedians. You know, we weren't like footlights, the big footlights brigade. You know, we were just all, all pretty regular regular lads and lasses. It it it, it, it I think it, it was easy. You know, and so we if it didn't work. You know, people going, oh, you know, people go, that's rubbish. That I go, yeah, but what to expect? You know, I, I used to, you know, I used to bingo call it, you know, um, in KMA, you know, it's like it wasn't, we weren't putting ourselves out there. And I think that what what we always had was Tim was a really brilliant like producer and he knew how to get the light in the shade in terms of you can have, you can have this. You can have this sort of thing. You can have a, a, a maybe a serious interview, not serious, but you can have a, a a good football interview, and then you can muck about. You know, you can have these different things, and and as and as it as we developed it, people started to kind of get interested in it, and then when we started getting people like Robbie Fowler on, who at the time was massive star, you know, so it was it was you know. It, it was the equivalent of well, I don't know, like I was getting say, uh, you know, uh, Salar, suppose Salaron or uh, yeah. oh, Patsy Bamford, you know, for you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, what I mean, it's not, you know, it was like we, we, we were getting the, we were getting a superstar on, and then, then we got and then Noel came on, you know, and, and Ray Winston was on, and we started getting um, a nice mixture of different sort of people, so it didn't just appeal to football fans, and it was appealing to all different kinds of of people. There was a bit of something for everyone, and that was always the thing. It was like it, it appealed from kids through to parents, and the kids maybe didn't get some of the gags. Mm. Some of them were a bit near the knuckle, you know, and 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 you know. Uh, but that was sort of it was that kind of it sort of appealed to everyone, I think, and and it didn't that didn't take itself too seriously. I mean, it was, we worked hard on it and we still work really hard on it. And, that, and that's something that kind of people maybe wouldn't know, you know, that I think they think we just rock up and just, and just churn it out. Uh, yeah. As you know, lads, you know, you've got 118 shows. You don't do 118 shows without, 
you know, doing your doing your own work, your research. But yeah, so um, just write down a bit of paper, mate. That's all you need. I, I think that I think that it, 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 it was it just um, the timing was right for it, and it and it and it was allowed to develop because we had a time we had we had that period on the show. We had a time slot, and Sky would just went, you know, were, were great. The bosses were like, just crack on and do it, and and they maybe didn't realise. They didn't really know. They didn't really know why it worked, and they weren't too bothered. They were just. It, it just was a. You know, was a, was a success. Yeah, it's a football institution, definitely. Definitely, it really yeah. is definitely. In, in this country, and and for for all those reasons, you know, it's like you say, it was a bit experimental. You know, it kind of gave you that almost that peek behind the curtain. You know, seeing people that usually would be behind behind the camera, and it was constantly kind of involving them within the show and and even things like that was just it just made it something different and it was um and yeah, for for it to kind of stand the test of time obviously it's a lot of different incarnations over yeah. the years and it's kind of changed a little bit but it's still you know it's still something that's you just know you're going to flick it on on a saturday morning and there's going to be something that's entertaining something that's I, funny on it as well i think that um i think that the, the, the thing with it is we always wanted it to be and, and I still, and I certainly want it to be like this now. Is you want to be watching something and you sort of feel like the wheels might fall off at any point, but they don't. But they don't. They never actually do. You know, we just manage to keep it going. And I think there's a real, there's a real uh, something to be said for that sort of TV where it's it's quite it's relaxed, it's chilled, and you feel like you know no one's really having no one's really trying too hard with it now you know and i don't think we ever really did you know it was it was we, we work we work very hard with it but w once we get on there uh, the show i think it needs it should be it should be like this you know it should be i wish you know we had more time on the show that's my that's my biggest issue with it is that i never we never really get to talk to sit and have a good old chat and and me and jim have some great chats on friday afternoon but we never get a chance to do it on a Saturday morning because we've got the guests, you know, we've got, you've got 72 minutes of editorial now and it's not much and you want to, mm -hmm. you want to do certain things and, and you've got to make sure that, that the shows, you know, it can't just be chat because then that'd be, you know, that it's like, you know, it, it becomes like a lot of other shows then that, that, yeah. that, are, on, that are on telly talking about football. And if you want to watch people talking about football, or listen to people talking about football, you know, there's plenty of there's plenty of places to go and do that. But we want we want some gags. You know, we want a bit of live music. We want to see Jimmy sticking in the top bin. We want to see the guests sticking in the top bin. We want to see the fans winning some money. You know, we want to see um, showboat. You know, you want to see the guests. You know, you want to see you want you want to see an actor on there. You want to see a film star. You want to see whoever and you've got to cram all that into 72 minutes now and it's it, it, it's difficult you know it's yeah. that's that's always our problem now it, it, it's never what we're going to do it's it's like what are we not going to do you know i always think it's good now when you get like an ex-pro on and they go in the car park take a few shots trying to do top bins and it's as a fan you remember them from being younger and you think he's still got it in because they're always class yeah so yeah you always do that, don't you? i i i love it out there and 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 it's it's weird because it's when I came back, they had um so every year they would they would do like um I don't know if you remember so when I when I first started on it they used to have like they had a little tiny little target yeah yeah outside in this little car park we were in a tiny studio like probably the size of this room here which is tiny and and then each week each year we sort of developed it and we had like one called Lobster where Rocket yeah. was dressed as like a lobster and then we had one called Chips. <laughs> Where, um, do you remember the program chips with the, the, the motorcycle cops? So yeah. it was basically like you had to chip it over this wall, and then the two, like, the, the, there was it was the two lads, it was uh, Aldo and another guy, and they'd come on as cop motorcycle cops and they'd be really like flirting with <laughs> Helen and like really sleazy. And then we did um, another one, and it was me and Sheephead, we were like the Russian subs doing like the warm up. We used to yeah. do like a real, we had like blonde wigs on and stuff. And I was always knackered, and but sheep had like one, he was never putting it in. He was always just, he was, I was doing all the proper like jumps and all that, and he was just doing like little, little, you know, those little things with your arms, big circles and all that. And then, so each year it kind of developed into something else. And then when I'd left, they started doing like, uh, 
the one with all the different holes to up to the Champions League. Yeah. Um, and, and it sort of was getting big, and they were all getting really big budget. And then when I and then when I the first year I came back, they were like, "Oh, uh, they've already built this goalie. They've already got this big goalie." And it was like, and I was like, "Well, who is it? Who's the goalie?" And they were like, "Oh, it's um, it's um, Courtois." And I was like, "Why is it Courtois? Because Chelsea won the league last year." And I was like, "What? That's gonna just that's that's not you know you that's great if you're a Chelsea fan, but you're watching that every week. You know, Leeds fans, brilliant, yeah." Cheers, lads. <laughs> so I said, "Well, I said, how much does it cost?" <clears throat> I said, "How much does it cost?" And they went, they showed me the number, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> but you know, that it was, you took it him on, didn't you? You got him at home. No, it, but you, so what I did is we, we went, the, the Euros were coming up. So I said, I tell you what, let's turn him into Manuel Neuer. Because England, if they get to the Euros, they're going to have to score past Neuer to win the Euros. So it was a bit sort of jingoistic. And so, and then that year after that, I was like, I tell you what, let's just sack off all these big, it's a knockout style mm-hmm. thing. Why don't we just put a goal out there, right? And put some AstroTurf down and we can do what we want every week. We can just go out and it'd be like, in my, I don't know about you, but as a kid, I always wanted to have a, a, a thing downstairs where you go downstairs into like a basement and it's like a full size astro turf. You know, I had this thing in me and my mate used to talk about it all the time, a bit weird. But um, it was, uh, and it was like this thing, it was like, let's get this astro turf outside. And we've managed to, and then, you know, it's it sort of, we've then someone went, oh, let's put, let's put some bins in. So it cost us, the, the amount of money it cost us, and the amount, you know, and we just we don't we never we don't change it. We're not changing it for three years. We just add little bits to it here and there. We've got a brand. We've got a new goal in. I don't know if you saw it. We've got one like a box goal now. Very constant. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the bins, are, the bins are just the same. Bins are bins are just the same. So it's like, but it doesn't matter because if someone sticks it in top bin, everyone just loses the their you know stuff. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, man, it's absolutely class. That's become a challenge now, though, even for the fans, isn't it? Just stick it in the top bin. Yeah, I, I mean, we can't claim that we invented the phrase top bins, but we have basically nicked it, and <laughs> we will, we will take, you know, we will take anyone to court who tries to use it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's it's amazing how many things have transferred over from soccer home. So crossbar challenge, uh, yeah. and then the one where you just have to swing it in from a corner, yeah. straight into oh. net from a corner. That was um, that was on uh, that wasn't soccer M that that was on the um, the fantasy football club that was the two footed yeah. corner challenge. Yes, it was. That's it. Yes, it was, and yeah. that was uh, yeah, that was good. We see, we could we should re- we should we could reinstate that and get that back and do it again. Because and I tell you what, if you look at through some of the old ones, there's a few there's a few good ones on there. Someone's done it in two. I think Ar- Arnautovic or someone did it in two and just and just walked off. I did it in, I've done it in three while being a sub at Taddy with Brownie. <laughs> I did it in three. I did it have in got that right for the first time, left foot twice. Have you got footage of it? No, I was a sub. No, I don't believe you then. Level, <laughs> I don't that level, Fenners, to, to be fair, Fenners, the crossbar challenge holds the most fondest football playing memory for me. I was a... I was a coach at Osset Town and we played Leeds United under 23s in my first ever game. There was a thousand fans there and we were pissing about at half time. And I obviously walked onto pitching a pair of trainers. I'm sure Tommy Taylor, maybe of Scarborough, for, formerly of Scarborough, were, were there as well. And I, I, I shanked one and it came fl- flush off at Barwick first go. And I just walked around and walked off and got a little bit of a round of applause. And I'm like, that's it. I've, I've, uh, I've cracked it. That's it. It's, it's, well it's, me. it's good, actually. They've started sticking up a few old classics of people who've done it, you know, because. Mm. You go back through the archives and you see, like, um, we used to do skills school and stuff like that, and, and you'll find, like, Raheem Sterling did it, uh, you know, uh, and then um, Jordan Henderson did it when he was at Sunderland. Yeah, yeah. It's nice just to sort of kind of see what, you know, incredible careers they've, had, they've, had, uh, they've gone on to have. Yeah, definitely. Right, so before we talk a bit of Leeds United then, um, got a few questions that came in via email today, Fenners. Uh, on. So one from Aunt, Aunt Taylor, you know, he's, he's oh, well known by Paddy. No problem, you, he's, he's busy, isn't he? He's like, <laughs> he'll, he'll like that, he'll be all yeah. over that. He put, yeah. being, a, being a famous television bloke who works around the beautiful game, what's been your own highlight and low light over the years? Keep plugging the mighty Sea Dogs on Soccer AM. Lots of love from Paddy Miller's old dirty sock collector. Regards, Aunt Taylor. Yeah, that last bit's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, um, a little bit. 
They, the first would, things it weren't at the ground, it were in his house. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, just wandering around. I would say that, the, 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 I mean, it depends what you want. You know, you know I can go like, I like, I've, 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 inter- I've got to interview some amazing people, met some, met some brilliant people. It's very hard to kind of pick one thing. Um, the, the, the thing, for, the, 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 the best bit of it for me is actually doing the show and still being able to do that show and um, to come off air. And it's like that feeling that you get, which is, is something that I sort of think about it. Like, what will I, what will I do afterwards? You know, and I suppose it's a bit, you know, and it's, it sounds a bit cheesy, but it's like, I suppose, football, when they stop playing, if they don't get that, that buzz, that rush of doing it. And it's, it's, I used to be petrified. I used to be so nervous, and and that that's kind of dissipated now. That's gone. So the, the actual doing doing the show, and um, it's, you know, it's, I'm very privileged, and 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 I, and I don't ever take it for granted. That it is the sort of thing that I know people will go, look at him doing that. You know, it's it's and you know, don't get me wrong, it's been hard work, but it's it's. I never I never take that for granted. I'm very I'm very privileged. So. Um, that's that's sort of general. I mean, some of the people I've got to interview, you know, um, really fortunate. I actually, um, I was telling Paddy earlier that I uh, I interviewed John Charles uh, at Ellen Road, and, and I, 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 it was it was for a feature called Changing Rooms, and so we went, we were in the Changing Rooms, and, and so we, I chatted to him in there, and it was a beautiful at the moment. He came out uh, after. Afterwards, we had we were just getting some shots, get a few like cutaways and things, and he came out onto the onto the, the side of the pitch, and we just got these shots of him, and he stood and he kind of looked out across the pitch, and he he was welling up, you know, and it was, it's like, you know, there'll be a lot of people who maybe don't know, you know, obviously Leeds fans will will, will know who he is, and and but stuff like that, I I, I always go what privilege to to being able to spend a bit of time with with someone like him. Um, purely because I, uh, uh, you know, the the position that I was in, and um, and, and you know, I I I, I went I interviewed Pele. I went I went to Amsterdam and interviewed Pele, and I, I for eight minutes, eight minutes. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bloke stood behind. There was a bloke stood behind the camera going, you know, and he was literally he was he was eight minutes, and I was like, come on, mate, there's a break. It's like Pele, you know, and um. I've been really fortunate to to to, to do that, but um, and, and there's, there's a list, and it's, I don't want to, you know, just if you just list them off, it sounds like oh, you know, you know, but um, that that they're 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 things that kind of, you know, you when you stop and you you know you go wow, you know, the the, the stuff that I've been able to do through the show, but also doing the stuff that, you know, the stuff that had a bit of an impact on on. Um, on people as well, you know. Again, it sounds a bit cheesy, but someone messaged me the other day going, "Oh, uh, I, I didn't really watch Soccer M, but I've started watching it, and I love it when you. I love Shocker Saturday. I love the sketch, and 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 it just puts a smile on our face on Saturday morning. And you know, when when everything that's going on with with COVID, it, it, this this is these these are, these were her words, and it just you know keep keep it up, and it it's 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 nice when you hear that kind of stuff, you know. And you, obviously, you know, you get you get stick and you get pelters, but it, it's it. I, I see it as that's that's what we should be doing with that show, and we talk about it a lot. And it's let's not do what everyone else is doing. Let's do what we let's let's do what we think's right, in, and what makes us, you know, what we think's funny, and, and 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 what we think that you know, like people like you guys want to see. And um, yeah, so that's that that's. That's really the yeah. I've not really answered his question there, and I've, <laughs> I've rambled on. So, to be uh, fair, that's, that's all we do week in week out. We just don't actually answer yeah. anything. Talk about yeah, what so we want to talk about. It's, it, but you know the the, the 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 thing like the thing like you know the, the getting to, to, to meet these great these great uh, players who some some who are sadly no longer with us. It, it, it's something that I'll I'll, I'll uh, you know I'll always remember. I never take that for granted. No, mate, definitely. I know we're, we're not not the same, but in, in a similar boat. You know, we're we're very blessed having to being able to interview some of the people that we've been able to interview. And you know, if talking show ends tomorrow, 
you know, we'll we'll have great memories to go away with, and and, and that's what uh, that's what a lot of it's all about. You know, I think there's too much focus nowadays on how much money you can make off things and how many stuff you get off stuff. And the day we do this because we enjoy it, and we're, we're lucky that we get to interview people like you, where we wouldn't normally get to interview um, yeah. people like yourself. So definitely, uh, shall we talk about a little bit of Leeds United then, Fenners? What have you yeah. made of um, what have you made of Leeds United start to the Premier League season and being back in the um, back in the big time, as it were? Uh, I'm just really glad that you know you you, you did you did it and and that Bielsa you know stuck around and uh, with the project obviously I don't know the ins and outs of it but um, that I thought it was great that he, he he you know he was so desperate to to get you up and I'm just I've got a soft I have got a soft spot for Leeds my um, my brother and my uh, my brother and my two sisters and my 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 mum's um, previous husband were from. from from Harrogate, so uh, he he was a bit of a he wasn't he's not a big football fan. Shout out Paul Bramley, that's my brother by the way. In case he's watching, um, it won't be. Um, <laughs> um, so I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Leeds, and and I and I was secretly you know desperate for them to to, to get back up because it's just. I just knew, you, you know basically if Leeds are, in, if Leeds are back in the Premier League, you know every, every game that Leeds plays, it turns into a big game, you know. And it's I, I'm I'm a I'm a Liverpool supporter, but I'm a Liverpool supporter, you know, from afar. I've never been someone who really goes and watches, go and what goes and watches them. I always played football. And I think you either kind of play or you you, you watch. And I was always someone who who played. And I just feel that uh, it, I, I just love I just love Leeds style of football. I, I think. You know they they proved people wrong saying they were going you know like last year they were going to burn out again and and you know they kept the going that 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 you know a lot's made of the fitness levels but I think you've got to look at the quality of players as well and the style of football and the bravery and I think it's you know Des what uh, Des Walker came on on the fantasy football club and he talked about players having moral courage um, and you know not like the courage to go and you know munch someone or two foot someone or you know. Um, but but to to keep playing in the same way and to keep trusting in the the method and you see that with a lot of teams like City and, and Liverpool that you know they they trust they trust it and Ars- you see it with Arsenal now the way they're starting to play out from the back and and uh, you know a lot of Arsenal fans going what we're we doing what we're we doing you know but it's it's you know there's a lot of people who know a lot more about football than me and about a lot of football fans. Who, who understand that that's that's the way that a lot of teams are going to play and and the intensity the you know I, I, I love I love Calvin Phillips I, I love you know Aileen I think Stuart Dallas you know I look at all these players and you're going wow these aren't these aren't just great athletes these these guys are they're they're, they're ex- excellent to your know, top quality footballers as well and you can see that um, they will. In the way that Liverpool players have hundred percent bought into Klopp, they they've bought into into Bielsa, and um, you know I I just I don't know I don't know you know I couldn't sit here and talk to you about Bielsa about his his philosophy and and, and what he believes in, but I know that Guardiola is a huge advocate of his and a huge a huge fan, so that you know that speaks volumes. I think that um, I just I just find him I find him fascinating. I find I find the way he um, the way he kind of carries himself and just so unassuming. And you see him, you know, uh, there's that shot of him in a, in a little coffee shop in Leeds doing his team. You know, he's doing drawing up his t- whatever he was doing, um, and it's just great. I just love it, and I and, and I love the fact that you know Patrick Bamford. You know, he's not going to score goals in the Premier League, is he? Well, he seems to be doing all right, you know, and he seems to be scoring. A couple of worldies the other night, you know, with zero backlift, and um, I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, again, you'll have talked about this. It's just a shame that the fans aren't aren't there to um, to be able to enjoy it. But hopefully, they they are they are enjoying it. And um, look, I think already, you know, we've seen that this isn't a this isn't a team that's going to be um, you know floundering in, in in the in the lower echelons of the Premier League. Come the end, of, come the end of the season. If any, you know, they're going to be, you know, in in certainly, certainly top half. I would say. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a, a, <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit of a. Oh, great, great, 
There you go. That's 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 gone viral now, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on then to, to yeah. Friday night. <laughs> well, how fun as this snotted you are. <laughs> there's, your hi- there's your highlight reel, lads. I was like, classic. I was like, classic. What's, that what's that on my nose? Eh? It's like people, <laughs> when, uh, when people when people <laughs> listen to podcasts rather than watch it, they'd be like, "What are they on about?" <laughs> no. Yeah, so just to put a bit, just to put a bit of meat on the bones, uh, Fenner's had a candle hanging from his nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Can't Your mum would have thought that when you were a kid. How long? So, anyway, so like, for that. Seriously, how long were you? What? How long were you uh, on that before five, like, you said anything? Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, sorry about that. So apologies to anyone who's who's, who's eating or. Um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> So yeah, fellas, uh, moving on to the Villa game. What feels like it's such a long time ago? Just just this Friday night gone. Um, was anybody a bit worried going into the game? Uh, I'll come to you first, Pad, because, you know, Calvin Phillips being out for six weeks. Um, you know, Diego Llorente missing. We've not actually seen him play yet. Um, Liam Cooper missing. Suddenly it looked like a bit of a makeshift defence with a makeshift holding midfielder as well. Were we a bit worried? Because still were on a bit of a run, weren't they? Unbeaten in eight, yeah. I think, weren't they? Yeah, I was slightly worried, obviously, because uh, the in-laws family are all big Villa fans. So that's that puts a bit more pressure on it because you're getting stick for for weeks on end out but I think for me I felt like when you saw the team sheet I'm a bit like when we first heard the news of Calvin Phillips being out and Laurenti and Cooper still not being fit your first thought is naturally being oh no we're missing our key players in key areas but then for me as he gets closer to kick off weirdly I don't know whether it's optimism or rose tinted glasses as we get closer to kick off I'm more and more confident then weirdly I'm a bit like yeah we'll do these and then I think the way we started the game, then as soon as 10, 15 minutes into the game, I thought, yeah, we're on it here. We're on it today. We can we can win it. And it went from, I'll take a point here to, yeah, I, I think we should get three points. And I think when you look at the way Villa play, they rely a lot on Jack Grealish, don't they? So obviously it was a, a massive game, obviously, f- to keep him out of the team. And I thought we did that really well out of the game. Um, and I thought we played well overall and we, we deserved it. But yeah, I'd have took a point before the game. As the game got into it, I think Villa had a spell, didn't they, before half time where they kind of came into it for 10, 15 minutes and it was kind of one of them where you thought, I hope it isn't like a Wolves where it's a game of two halves where they came out the better team in the second half. But we didn't, we just seemed to kick on. Um, Paddy Bamford obviously <coughs> released his inner beast after Tyrone Mings manhandled him and then uh, turned into a prime Cristiano Ronaldo when he's dumped it in on edge of box. So, deserved win, I think. I think when you listen to a lot of what the Villa fans have said as well, the majority of them have said Leeds are the better team, which you can't really argue with. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, one thing that did make me laugh, Rags, and I'll come to you in a minute, is uh, the little bit of, not an outrage, but a little bit of surprise that Bielsa hooked strike when he did. Uh, we've obviously seen this before when he did it twice notably with Calvin Phillips and look what the play Calvin Phillips has turned out to be after that. Um, but you could tell that strike did look like a bit of a walking red card. I think he was... I personally think with Leeds United roasting to glasses on, he was a little bit unlucky with the booking because I don't think he got a great deal of Grealish. I thought Grealish made a, a pretty good meal of rolling around quite a lot and making it look like he'd been shot. Uh, but we're not surprised with that kind of change. But looking at that change, Rag, when he made it and he sat he sat clicky a bit deeper and had uh, some serious legs in middle of the park with Jamie Shackleton, um, it looks purely in, an inspired change, doesn't it? He was, he, was, he was obviously not happy that it weren't really working. Um, in terms of it would potentially going to get sent off. Yeah, I mean, like you say, we, we've seen it happen. I think the Calvin Phillips one was, was it Swansea away in his first season? Very, very similar, similar time of the game. And uh, and yeah, Phillip, Phillips was was a kind of walking red card in that game and uh, and he got hooked and and it was the same thing. And, you know, Stroke goes off and he looks he looks dejected, he looks disappointed, but he just can't let that go on, get on top of him because he's, he's a fine player. We've seen it. Um We've seen it at centre half. We've seen it in in this position, but against a team like Villa, who do have those players who do enjoy maybe kind of uh, making out uh, a little bit more than um, than challenges are, you know, it, it were it was dangerous game, and he, he had to come off. I thought Shackleton was was immense when he came on. I thought it, it was uh, his involvement in some of the build up of certainly the third goal. I think it was. Um, he's full of running, you know. Obviously, we all we, you know, we've interviewed him and uh, um, thoroughly behind him as a as a as a great young prospect coming through, and, and uh, he's really kind of rewarding us um, for that. And obviously, can 
do it at, the, at this level, as we, as we can see. Just to go back on the on the actual game itself and the kind of build up to it, I think in a, in a way, you know, looking at it from hindsight, I think we've kind of benefited from them having that brilliant start to the season because it was another team who, who actually fancied themselves and wanted to play football. And I think if anybody looks at the way Leeds have started this season and looks at a way of kind of counteracting it, it's the way the Wolves started played against us defensively. And I think we might start to see a few more teams do that against us now. I think Villa, you know, four out of four, they're flying high. Yeah, Leeds, you know, newly promoted team. We've got, we've got players that are, are on fire. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll beat them. And they tried to play football against us and, and we thoroughly, I think we dominated the game, to be honest. Like I said, we had a few spells. Um, Melies done brilliantly to keep, to keep us in, you know, to keep it nil-nil from that Jack Grealish goal and then from the resulting corner as well, he's tipped the, the concert volley over, over the top. Um, and, you know, we punished them for not taking that chance and we go up the other end not long after and, uh, you know, Bamford's there on the money. And uh, and from then on, I think it, the game just, it just was, I think they just heads went down. It, it was weird because you looked, at, you looked at kind of the weekend before, uh, Spurs are three and a lot with nine minutes to go and concede three goals in nine minutes. Uh, at no point once we went ahead against Villa did I think that Villa could get back into that game. They just looked like they were just beaten. Uh, and I just think that they, they, they just didn't fancy that. And I just didn't, I think we were just that dominant over them, to be honest. And I, I think that shows how far we've come as a team because if you look at Aston Villa's team with the likes of Grealish and Ross Bartley, they'll win a lot of football matches this season. And they'll put a lot of goals past people as well with Watkins up top. So they are they are a very good side. So even to get a clean sheet away at their place, it just shows how, how good we've come along as a team. We've but lost Gaz. Yeah, we've just lost Gaz. He's just tuned off. <laughs> I think it was when you used the word foot you used the phrase football matches, mate. Yeah. I think he's like, <laughs> oh, it's got it's gone a bit it's he's gone a working, bit too, it? it's gone a bit too analytical. Yeah. He's dropped he's dropped the football matches phrase in and then I think he just did one, oh, mate. He'll be, he'll be swearing like mad, mate, behind that he's camera. Get, he's gone to get me a hanky. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the game, Bennett? You know, I was working, so I kind of... Um, I, I saw I, I saw the highlights. Um, yeah. I was listening to it on the radio as I drove home, and it was still it was still nil-nil. And then um, I came in, and I was doing some stuff, and, and then I saw the result, and I obviously watched the goals. And, yeah, I just... I mean, I, I didn't see the whole thing, but I thought, you know, you're right about the sending off. I think that was kind of like, it was almost like the 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 the, um, the, the sort of something that like a tournament, like a, an international manager might do in a tournament, like yeah. sent, that that was that was potentially something that's going to happen and could have cost you the game and big call. But I think that you know. It was it was absolutely it was spot on, wasn't it? You know, you, you, you watch you watch games, don't you? And you sense you, you see it, you go, he's going to get sent off here. And and it's professional football. And you know what happens is, you know, you know, I think we're naive to think that someone's on a yellow card, and they come in and you go, look, he's on a yellow card here. You know, let's let's mm. let's if we can get him down to ten in 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 any level of football, certainly Premier League football, I think that that's that makes a big difference. Ten against eleven is huge, I think. So, I think it was a really shrewd 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 call to to take him off. I think what did for him was he got booked against Grealish, and then he, he had a very similar challenge like about a minute later. Um, yeah. He didn't get booked. I, 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 I think Grealish will do will does that to people, and and I think in in that he's such a clever, brilliant footballer. I I think he's absolutely superb, and I think that the way he his sort of game management and the way he understands he he, he lures people in. Um, I was what it was uh, the England Wales game, and I think it was Ampadu. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but he he, he gave away a free, he gave away a few free kicks, and and, it, and you could basically then see that. He didn't know whether to go to, to get to go tight or to give him the space, and, and you know you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, and yeah. and then you give him that space, and it can, and if you let him get tight, and he, he's gonna, you know, you're gonna get a book, so you're gonna get sent off, and then I think I think um, I think Ryan Giggs took, took him off after you know after a while, just because I, I think it was that that would that looks like a similar sort of situation. Do you know when you do on about obviously BL, so we've touched on it earlier about him being interesting and that sort of thing. I think for me. 
the top managers make that decision and the players respect it after 20 minutes because it benefits the team. So he's brought him off. No doubt he'll speak to Struick when he comes off or goes in the dressing room and they'll, they'll pass it on. But he does what's right for the team. And I think when you look at the top managers of who do, who do that, Pepper do that. Pepper takes someone off after 20 minutes. Uh, Klopp had text someone off after 20 minutes. I'm not certain all managers would. And I think that just shows the level of respect that Bielsa has. And he's protecting the player as well. I know it's not ideal him coming off after 20 minutes, but that's better than playing against Villa where they have players like Grealish and Bartley who break the lines and you could get a second yellow quite easily. And then if he gets sent off, it's even worse for him. He's a young lad playing for the first team, getting sent off. He's then missing further games. Well, so I think it's better for him long term as well. You know, chances are he'll be he'll be playing against Leicester yeah. in that Calvin Phillips role. He'll he'll probably start the game. Mm. Um, obviously, if he gets sent off, he's he's but he's suspended for that. So then, who who are you going to play there? We've, we've said it countless times. You know that that position, as crucial as it is to the way that we play, it's, it's actually quite difficult. There's only a select few people in our squad who can actually play that position. Although it did kind of work with the whole Shackleton and Klitsch thing, and um, after, after the substitution was made, and we didn't actually kind of play with that kind of position and it, it, it it's interesting to see uh, but I think he'll still probably start against Leicester Stuart. yeah so one player we need to absolutely wax lyrical about and I, I dare say that we can hold our heads up high that we didn't really hammer him when he was having a bit of a nightmare uh, the other season but um, Patrick Bamford um, I'll be honest I was duty knobhead on Friday at half time I said I'd consider taking him off and sticking Rodrigo. Oh, now, come on, mate. to, to no, justify no. it, Fenners, I've got, I've got an argument. I've got a justification. So, my justification was this. It seemed like he was just having one of them games where it just weren't going to come for him. It just weren't going to be the rubber of the green that he needed. And I just thought that maybe sticking Rodrigo fruit middle and bringing Pablo on might give us that bit of control. And I, and I just fancied Rodrigo to maybe ch- take that one more chance. However... I'll quite happily on my hand up and say I know nothing about football. Uh, that's why I'm not a footballer. Therefore, Patrick Bamford uh, stuck it right down my throat. And um, an absolutely incredible hat trick. I mean, goal um, goal two and three, if if that's scored by a Messi, a Ronaldo, uh, Ibrahimovic, you know, some of the biggest stars in the game, we're still watching that today. I mean, the, the, the third goal, um, to tiptoe away from four players and then with... You know, with with minimal ease, just curl it past Emilio Martinez, who was arguably Arsenal's, you know, best keeper towards the end of last season. You know, I, I just thought it was incredible, and I thought I, I thought that uh, Mings did as a favour uh, or Cons whoever man handled him because they seemed to piss him off, and then he just went on a on a mad one. Do you know what I liked about Bamford as well? Though it was his interview after where he said, "I missed two chances, and I knew I'd score the third, and I thought that's." That's a that's an elite level striker that because mm. he'll know exactly how many chances roughly it takes him to score. But he keeps going, he keep and he's not dwelling on the ones he's missed, he just keeps going. I think they also said in an interview before he's nothing's changed with his game this season, he's just more efficient. And I did see a funny tweet saying Patrick Bamford's the only player who's not good enough for the championship but finds the Premier League too easy. And I thought <laughs> yeah. he's, he's yeah. pretty he's pretty bang on. He, he, every time he scores he, he, Every time he gets a chance at the minute, he's putting him away every single match, isn't he? And you can't argue with him at all. And he's proving everyone wrong. I think if you look at his Leeds career, I think it'd be hard to find any Leeds fan at some point who hasn't criticised him at some point. And sometimes it was rightly deserved where he was missing chances and it was costing us points. But I think he's taken on the role, hasn't he, with the media and everything. He's kind of doing a lot of the Leeds interviews. He's kind of fronting it all after games. And he's kind of taking it on his shoulders, and I think he's doing well from it as well, off the pitch. I think yeah, confidence... We... Sorry, go on. No, go on, go on. I was going to say, I think, you know, confidence is such a massive thing in life, but mm. certainly in football. And uh, it's like you look at Calvert-Lewin, Everton. It's mm. something's something's clicked there this season, and it's that self... You know, it's probably, you know I'm sure he'd sit here and go, I've always had that self-belief, and I've... Nothing's probably changed, you know, and it's it's people like me who, who sit and we go, oh look, he's doing this or he's, he's like, you know, he he's, I think he I think he is doing different things. I think you know he's, he's probably not doing as much of that running down the flanks as uh, uh, you know as, as he maybe was. And maybe Ancelotti's helped with that, but I think that confidence is 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 massive, and I think one goal one goal can change the whole season for for, for a striker because you get one and then it's like. 
I've got the taste for it. And uh, yeah. I, I saw that the other night. But I thought, like, just to echo what you said, the, the, the two finishes were the the, 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 the first, the, the second goal was an incredible strike, and the third one was it was like it was Bergkamp esque the way he, yeah. he just kind of manoeuvred himself around and then just. He made it look really simple, and you know, I'm a I'm someone who's played at the very very bottom level, and I know that's not that's a, that's not a, it was it was it was beautiful goal, super goal. Don't do yourself out of justice, mate. I've seen you play, you're not bad. Look, we don't need to go into that, and I'll pay you good money not, not to talk about that. But, uh, it's I I I was what uh, Paddy's referring to there is when um, we played at the Flamengo Land Stadium. Um, is it maybe two years ago now? Is it two summers ago? Yeah, it will have been. Yeah, and uh, it was. I, I, I forget how because I don't play eleven aside now, and I um, forget, you get how big the pitch is. The pitch is is mass that that pitch is is that pitch bigger than my, or is that because and and also what I remembered was well what I put hello. I forgot. I forgot where to run. I sort of like couldn't work. The distances were all like. I just. It was. It was. It was, it was great fun, but it's. Um, I don't probably didn't, probably didn't help you, mate. That I'm a forty twenty centre half who just launches it, so I didn't play all to feet, mate, and we're making you run down channels. There was, you know what, you know what it is. <laughs> when, when, you, when you're playing right back or right midfield, whatever it was. When you've not had a touch of the ball, like the pros or the ex-pros or the semi-pros, they'll all they'll give you it. They'll give you it at first, but then as soon as you like you you you, you swing a you swing a crossing, you know, a no open cross, or you know, they, they realise they just go nah, not going that way. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just stop giving you the ball. Stop giving you the ball. So you just make that run. You're making that run. You get this, yes, yes, come on, yeah, yeah, and, and just like just cut inside. <laughs> and you know, ping a forty yarder to the other, to the other side. Switch the field. And, uh... Do you know what? Do you know what I remember about that game? We had obviously we had Dean Windass centre mid, and he turned round and we we played it long a couple of times, and he literally said, "I'm not running unless it, you pass it to my feet. I'm not doing anything." Yeah. I was like, All right, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, "I'm trying, I'm trying to get it to your feet, mate, but it's not really working out." <laughs> yeah, but just. Well, that, uh... That just shows the level, though. It's like when we had obviously John O'Green in came at Tad and he retired, he'd left Notts Forest, but even at 32, 33, there's still at that level, there's still so much better. They, they seem to get time on the ball without even running. So even when like Dean would have been 40 at this point, for, over 40 playing, he's still another level. He's still a class, wasn't he? Yeah. Just going back to the Villa game and talking about 40 yard passes. Um, we brought uh, like this Brazilian kid on who we signed on deadline day, Rafina, who made the pass of the game. Um, like I, I like I, I did I did that thing as a fan where I just couldn't really believe what I'd just seen, and I just bust out laughing at three hours. <laughs> I can't honestly believe he's seen that and made it as a pass because even watching from the zoomed out angle of the camera, even I didn't see that pass were on. Was, was anyone else's incredible. first reaction just a bit as he meant that pass? And then yeah. when you watched it back, you were like, "That is unbelievable." Yeah. Mate, the thing is, right? I, I, you know, I thought, I thought it was a fluke, and then I watched him for twenty threes the other day, and he did it again, a similar pass, and he made that pass as well. He just seems to have the ability that Pablo's got to see a pass that nobody else sees, I was just, even, I was even the about, people on the pitch. I was just about to say that, and I think I think Bielsa has even alluded to the fact that he sees him potentially playing more central than obviously he has done for for Rennes. He's, he's obviously come as a winger, but I think. The scouting and and the and the due diligence that we've done on him, we've obviously seen that he's got those attributes, and I reckon, yeah, I think what we're seeing there is the long term successor to Pablo, and yeah, he can just pick those absolute unbelievable balls out that, like you say, a second before you don't think that's on, and then he just, like you say, just pings it, Jesus, and so, absolutely rapid, yeah, yeah, pace for days, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just a couple more mentioning dispatches before we move on from the Villa game. Um, I thought Rodrigo was outstanding, looked exactly the uh, £27 million. Um, well, we did sign a striker, but now he's playing as a 10 and looking every every bit of the part as well there. Um, yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was outstanding as well. Him and Paddy Bamford seem to be getting a little bit of a partnership, albeit not a traditional, you know, front two partnership, more as this 
this 10 and this 9 type thing. And I, I think that it just seems to be going from strength to strength every game. What, what did you guys make of uh, Rodrigo? Yeah, like you say, I think I think he's made that position his own now, hasn't he? He's, uh, he's probably not been what we've bought him for, but like you can't displace Patrick doing what he's doing. So, um, yeah, I thought I thought he was fantastic. And, and does, I mean... We've seen him change games. We've seen him like not start games uh, early on in the season and, and come on at half time or, or early on in the second half. Uh, and in those games, you know, Bamford scored as well. I think it helps him as well. I think it's helping. We've talked about things clicking. I think it's helping Bamford realizing he's got someone like that behind him doing the doing some of the things that he uh, he he wouldn't have to do because we we know what. What Banff has been like last season, the amount of work he'll get through, all the, the, the constant pressing. We, you know, we start defending from him, and we know that he can do that, and he will do that constantly. But does does having Rodrigo playing the way that he is and how how well he's doing does that free Banford up to do a few other things and get into those positions that perhaps he weren't in other games because he's had to chase it out wide, and, and all of a sudden we've got we've won the ball back, but. Bamford's in the right wing position because <laughs> he's he's gone chasing it down and things like that. So um, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. And and another one. I mean, I don't. You can't really pick a bad performance out. But I thought Aylin moving into centre half was absolutely bar that bar that little error that he makes on Watkins, which he, he then res, makes up for because he clears it off the line from the chance from Grealish. Bar that, I didn't. I don't think he put a foot wrong. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. And for someone who's you know a right back. To, to move into centre half and play that way, yeah. Stop, really. And if we were to take um, some long lost tribe from the Amazon rainforest who've never seen football before, brought them in and started teaching them the basics of football, and said, "Does this does this magical man called uh, Marcelo Bielta and his teams do this?" and then show them that uh, ninety minutes plus four break where it's seven on four, uh, and Klitsch actually gets monk on because Harrison, biggest Harrison, don't square it to him at three 0 up in the ninety fourth minute. It's, it's this year's Wigan, isn't it? After we saw Leeds flood back to defend against Wigan last year in Championship or maybe even the year before, that, that, that motion of play has become this year's Wigan. But it just it just goes to say, Fenn has mentioned it earlier about Bielsa. Yeah, Bielsa's magic, but it's about having a squad of players that are willing to do that, that have that mindset of going, we're 3-0 down, we're 3-0 up here and it's the 94th minute, but we're still going to be as committed in the attack and the defence as, as as minute one. And we've we've seen a few players from the squad leave. And we, we you know some of them some of them quite high names, high profile names and everything like that. And it just goes to show those those were the players that weren't willing to do that sort of thing. That that courage you, you that Fen has mentioned earlier. Having that courage and, that, and having that belief and, and that's what it's all about and it's paying dividends massively. I I, I did an interview with Guardiola and I said to him What's the what's the main thing that you look for when you sign a player? And he said it's it's the it's the person. You know, it's 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 got to be that that person who is willing to have the mentality and the attitude to to buy into what we're doing. Because you know, obviously they've got to be you know a, a world class footballer. But if if you if you're not the right if you haven't got the right attitude to buy into that, and you're going to start questioning that, and you're not going to um, be open, in, be open, to, you know, to to learning and adapting. Then I don't think you're going to make it. And I think you're seeing that you're seeing that at, at some at Leeds, and you see that at Liverpool. You know, you, you look at Liverpool, and they're so together, and all those guys are buying into it, and they're all, you know, that they're, they're he, Klopp's managing them, but they're managing they're managing it on the pits themselves as well. Mm. You know, they're you can see they're all, you know, they're all they're all they're all that similar mindset. You know, like someone like Wan Alden, you know, I just think he's perfect for that Liverpool team because he just does what does what's required. Again, they're all brilliant players. I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying it's all about you know their personality. It's, it's, they've got to be brilliant footballers, but you can be a brilliant footballer, but if you're not willing to buy into it and not willing to keep keep doing it, keep doing it, and keep you know you, you see about you know Guardiola and 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 how he you know, make make the pitch big and if people don't make the runs and you watch you watch I, I watch a lot of football and I think what you know the players are incredibly high level but what the stuff that they're doing you watch City um it's creates create space 
you know, pass it, move it, create space, make the pitch as big as you can, draw them on, you know, and, and it's it's that kind of stuff. And and you can see why he he, he, he loses his rag if, you, if someone's not if someone's not busting a gut to create that angle to make that pitch five yards bigger so that he can play in that in, in that space, then you know, if you're if you're not that sort of player who's willing to do that, then you're not you're not gonna um you're not gonna cut it. I think Fenner's touched on it earlier, didn't he, about the Leeds players? Like, if you go through our team, a lot of them have all been at the <coughs> knockbacks where they've got something to prove as well. So you go through your team, you've got Melier in goal, young upcoming French under 23s, 21s international, got a point to prove. People said Leeds need to sign another goalkeeper. He's, he's kept that shirt in his own, nine clean sheets out of 16. You look at Ailing, drop down to Yeovil. Never thought he'd get back up to the Premier League. Got a point to prove, and he's excelling. I I had mates who were Liverpool fans who never really watched Leeds much. Saw Luke Ealing after that first game, and I messaged him saying, "Who the hell is he?" So then that was straight away. You go Liam Cooper. People called him League One Liam. He's our main centre half at the minute. He was out injured. Calvin Phillips. People said he wasn't good enough for Leeds. We should have sold him instead of Ronaldo. And it's just a team full of people who are desperate to prove people wrong. Even you go as far as Mateus Klitsch. At one point, we said he wasn't good for us and loaned him out. Yeah, he got bummed out by Christian didn't he? Yeah, and that's what I mean. And it's a team full of the same people that want to prove a point. They've not just rested on what they've done getting us out of the Championship. They want to prove it in the Premier League now. And I think that's right in the group. 100%. Can't hear you, guys. Gaza. And they've got a manager who believes in them. Yeah. <laughs> Having a mayor, by the way. Jesus Christ. Oh, my word. 118th anyway. and uh, last hour, so is it? <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> mate, honestly, right now, I would just quit. It's Drew, like, everything that can go wrong is going wrong. <laughs> anyway, we'll, uh, we, we move on. Um, obviously, after the great result on Friday and the Villa fans... Um, Gaz is having an absolute... <laughs> <laughs> It's making it's making Candlegate uh, Norwich. It's making, it's just making it feel bad. Guys, you got me. So yeah, after the, oh for fuck's sake, <laughs> you look like I'm a back. Man. You look like a man. You're back. Game, mate. You're, You're back. Isolated. <coughs> I'm back. I'm back. And right. Anyway, moving on. Go. So Actually, after the Villa game. Honestly, this is driving me mad. Just as someone's men message as well from Jacksonville, Florida, saying they love the podcast. I don't know why. It's fucking dreadful. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, after after beating Villa 3-0, our under-23s then uh, featured uh, Rafina, Paveda, Hernandez, uh, Strike, and much of the first-team players because they needed some, some game time. Uh, and the top of the uh, Premier League 2, Norwich City, visited Thorpe Arch and... Right, Royally got their backsides handed to him as Juan Carlo Paveda and Pablo Hernandez just basically took the piss um, for for the best part of about 60, 70 minutes. So um, not really much to say on that. Um, the, the first team players shone through with a smattering of uh, Jack Jenkins and, you know, these players who we keep constantly talking about in the 23s who appear to be coming in and stepping into them. So the Alpha McCalmont spots and John Stevens spots are obviously out on loan at the moment. So uh, it was good to watch that and it was good to see Rafina. Uh, play, you know, a large, large amount of the game. We got to see what it was about a little bit. <laughs> He's gonna be fuming after this, isn't he? He is, yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I was good, Did you, know you see any of it? I watched bits of it, mate. Yeah, um, I try to catch up some of it after as well. You know what I thought were good? The likes of when the first team players come in, Charlie Creswell stays captain, and I quite like that because you think. He's there week in, week out, but it's also good for his development as well, isn't it? Because he's going to be in there seeing how the likes of Pablo Hernandez conduct themselves on a match day and that sort of thing. So I think it's really good right from top, top to bottom of the club. And you can't... I like the fact that they play the same style of football, the same brand. Um, and if anything, the 23 is now, if if the games you're allowed to attend, it's, they'd attract a good following now, the 23. If people would want to go watch, wouldn't you probably get a couple of thousand at some of the games? Yeah, yeah, if you could let them in, huh? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, before we start looking towards Leicester, I need to hear from one of our sponsors, assuming I can get through this sponsor read without being pixelated or something. I've just texted my kids and said, get off the internet, you're killing me here. Uh, so hopefully they'll, uh, they'll listen to me and get off the internet. Or uh, my wife in my bedroom needs to pedal faster to keep the internet powered. So we have to do in Barnsley. It's, uh, times are tough. Um, so yeah, we need to hear from one of our sponsors. And if you, if you run a business or... You know, you attempt to run a podcast like I'm doing here and you need to get your uh, global reach out there. You can either get um, a celebrity presenter from Sky On and let his nose dribble live on air or you can get someone who can uh, express and share your, your, your voice and your vision out to the masses on the internet. And the perfect people to do that are the guys from the Social Maze, massive Leeds fans. Um, and they specialise in uh, business management uh, and maximising your internet potential and your online potential. Social media is everything nowadays, as we all know. Literally, you can't do anything without being on social media. So if you need your business, uh, you haven't got time, or you need someone to just assist you in managing your social media, check the guys out at the social media. Big thanks to them. They've been with us since the start. Uh, so a massive thanks to them. If they could just mend my internet, that'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, check them out. Info at the social maze.com. You need to get you. You need to turn your Wi-Fi off, and you got. To, you need to tether your phone to your four uh, G, mate. Is that yeah? Like you, funny that, Fenders. You mentioned just before we came on. That's exactly what you're doing. And yours has not missed a beat. I'm on a certain internet provider's super duper flexible, super fast, ultra knackers band, and it keeps breaking. But anyway. We'll, no. we'll soldier on. We'll soldier on. <laughs> Looking forward to Leicester then. Uh, Fenners, you know, you've watched um, a lot of Premier League football. You might be better placed to tell us about how Leicester have started this season and what you, what we can expect from Leicester on Monday night at Ellen Road. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, I'm a big uh, I'm a big Brendan Rodgers fan. Um, his, his daughter actually works uh, with us on, on Soccer AM. Uh, Misha, shout out. She'll be watching. She won't. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I like Brendan, and I think that um, they've they've invested in again real. They look like they've got a, a plan. They look like they've got um, uh, a program. And again, I think they are. I, I I look at teams and I and I'll I'll turn on and I go, do I want to watch this? Do I want to watch this team? Do I want to watch this game? And I'm not just saying it because you guys run here, but you know Leeds, Leeds, Leeds certainly fit into that category. There's quite a lot of Premier League teams, but if there's a Leicester game on, I'll be watching it because I just love, I love that the sort of the personality of the team. I love the per not, you know not not necessarily the personalities within the team. I do like the personalities within the team, but I think you know you've got people like Tielemans and, and Madison. Um, we had Andy King on Soccer M the other day, uh, who is. Um, He's he's left the club. He's left the club now. But bizarrely, you know, he's 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 a Premier League winner a couple a couple of years ago, and he's 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 he hasn't got a club, which I think is absolutely unbelievable. But it, it sort of shows what um, the the strength that that they've got. Um, and he was talking about Vardy, saying Vardy's actually. He talked about Vardy, and he talked about um, uh, Mares, and he talked about Kante. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but he said. Kante just turned up at the training ground and they just saw this this little guy like walking around, you know, and they were like, who's this guy who keeps turning up, you know, and, and is, are we going to sign him or what, you know, and then, you know, lo and behold, you know, he went on to do, to do what he did and he said Mares was, the, was the, you know, the the outstanding footballer in that team. But he said that Vardy is now kind of learned, um, not, he, he, he's, you know, he's not just getting by on, on you know, Having a Red Bull and a coffee and fizzing around, his his understanding of the game is is is, is great. And, and I and I just I think he's sort of underrated Vardy, uh, mm. even though you know he was. I know he, he retired from England duty, and I think that's that probably has has helped him. But I just I just love watching him. I just love I, I love I love his movement. I love his tenacity. It it you know he'd be a. He'd be great at Leeds, wouldn't he? I'm not saying you know he can but but you know he's a he would be someone I think who would he'd, he'd be like a Bielsa kind of player. Um, so I think I think they're um, I think that you know they 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 sold Chilwell. I think Chilwell was was top quality. Obviously that's why he's got to Chelsea. A brilliant left foot, and I think you know we need to get him in that England side to get some balance down that left hand side. So I think they're. Um, I think they're a, a, a top side. Um, beat Arsenal at the weekend. 
Uh, it's first time they've beaten Arsenal for, for for a number of years, so yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a it's a, it's a tight game. But again, you know that's it's, is it the Monday night football? It is, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Monday night football. I think you find it's on the on, is it on your Sky Sports? I think you find. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, okay. Nice. Well, I think we'll be tuning in, lads. You know, uh, <laughs> so I, th- I, I think I think it'll be fascinating. I think it'll be a uh, I think it'll be a swashbuckler. You know, you have a go, we have a go, and. Um, you know, let's hope you know we get we get plenty of goals. But I think it'll be an intriguing game. Um, two two top two top coaches. Yeah, definitely. Uh, shall we get some predictions then, Rags? Uh, over to your uh, little segment. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no jingle this week. No, I don't. I, I, dare, I don't think the internet will uh, will manage yeah, it. Fine. No worries. Bangie, you've got to sing it. No problem. Bangie, you've got to sing it. I'll say it yourself. Raggy, Raggy, Raggy. Raggy's predictor. That's fair. I like it. We've got it. It's a tool, isn't it? So we, we, I want to use it. Um, just looking over the uh, over the results from um, from the Villa game. Um, two of you on this show, actually, with me tonight, doubted us against Villa. Both went for two two draws. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, you don't yeah, pick yeah. up a point. Um, nobody got it bang on, uh, but uh, me, old Ben, and young Ben still at least said that Leeds would win. Uh, we thought it'd be a bit tighter than it actually turned out to be. So, um, Gary, old Ben, young Ben now level on six, me on four, Haddy losing on three. Mate, I'm having a nightmare. It matches my fantasy football. Man. Yeah, fantasy football. Fantasy football, football you're really stinking, aren't you? This weekend, mate. Follow average. You're meant to be the one pad that knows a bit about football and all, not like those numbers. Do, do you know exactly. what this, this predictor me? I think it's really hard because I've got rose tinted glasses for Leeds, but now because I'm chasing, I'm trying to do the opposite to what the rest of you are picking. <laughs> You're overthinking I think, it. I think. I think if you start, you know, when you when you use the phrase football match, you know, you you, you talk about a game, you use the term football match, like you know, you. you you did a few moments ago. I think you should be very embarrassed about your prediction scores, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So moving on to Leicester, as as Fen has said, it's uh, the Monday night football. I think that's uh, I think that was the worst part of uh, of Friday night, uh, knowing that we had ten days to wait between a, a Friday and then a, the the following Monday uh, in between games. But we're not going to uh, not going to cry about that because we are televised again so it'll be good to see um we're at home um the bens who are missing tonight they've both gone for the same score they reckon it's going to be a 2-1 leeds victory um so what do you think we'll start with our guest Benners. what do you think is it is it uh, is it, uh, is it uh, ellen road it's uh, ellen road yeah. um with that vociferous crowd <laughs> yeah yeah i'm going to um I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a draw, a score draw. Do you want? A, do you want an actual score? Yeah, I need. I need it. I need it. Because I think three top, points pundits, to get it top pundits don't normally give you know give you the scores. But I'm, all right, I'll, I'll, but I'm not a top pundit, so uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go two two a piece. Two two a Desmond. Nice one, Pad. I'm gonna go. I think it'll be a tough game, but I'm gonna go three two win. Like yes. I said, I think both teams will go for it. I think it'll be high scoring. Gary, I'm going to go same as Pad. To be honest, three two. Right, I want. I need you lot to go different to me, mate, because <laughs> I can't. Catch I'm going you. different. If you, all, I'm, if you I'm, all keep going the same result as me, I can't catch you. I'm going different. I'm going three one. Three one leads. I, I think you're right. I don't. I think. I think teams will. I think there will be a few teams who will now start to try and dig in. I don't think Leicester are one of those teams, um, but I think we will benefit from the, from from football teams who want to play football I'll against. Back, no worries. Um, who want to actually play uh, play the game? I think it, it just it suits the start our style of play. Yeah. You know, the, the one the one game where we got frustrated, which was the Wolves game, and it just didn't come off for us. Was it final ball and things like that? Just didn't drop for us in the box. And they came with a bit of a bit of a mission, didn't they? they want to, you know, 
defensively very solid and they just soaked it all up. Yeah, I, th- I do think it'll be a good game though. I think when you look at the likes of Leicester when they played Man City, they, they are exciting, aren't they? They do play on the shoulder. And I think for me, the key battle will be Robin Koch if Vardy starts because obviously Koch is obviously quite pacey, isn't he? So you'd be looking at him to try and nullify Vardy going in behind, but obviously Vardy's quite streetwise, isn't he? So you've got to be yeah. careful, especially in and around the penalty area. But I think that's a good battle for me. I was going to say, but I tell you what, since the, since those first two games where he, he gave two naive penalties away, he's outstanding. He's, he's out, yeah, and he, and he's learned. That's the thing. You look at that. You look at that Grealish chance against Villa, the one where he you know takes on the world, uh, and, and Melier saves it. At any time, he's just dying for one of those players to to stick a leg out and bring him down. Yeah. Everyone, but the, we just don't. We, we, it seems like we've now gone. Now hang on, like at this level, you're going to get penalty against you all the time. Um, and we just seem to be really kind of wise to it. Saying that, you know, Vardy's going to win a penalty against us now, isn't he? <laughs> on Monday night. But we just seem to be kind of adapting really, really well, which is which is great to see. Yeah, definitely. So it'll be an interesting one to watch on uh, on your Sky Sports on Monday night for Monday Night Football. Uh, and you'll get all the um, updates from us guys on Wednesday, of course. Uh, what we're going to do now is, uh, Fenners, just to put you in the picture, because I know, obviously, you probably missed last week's show, uh, being a regular listener that you are. Um, we've been running a bit of a competition for what was supposed to be just one week, um, but it's now been running on to three weeks. Um, so originally, we were giving away a copy of FIFA 21 for any console. And Simply, all people had to do was send us a screenshot of them subscribing to the podcast, to our emails, and then we ring them live on the show. So we rang the first week, uh, and the person who answers the phone has to hans- answer with the phrase from our intro. So it's quite complicated, but it's not too complicated. Um, and I didn't go to school much, and I can work it out. Uh, but nobody got it right. So the week after, Paddy added, very kindly of him, a terrace mug, like the one that you're uh, sporting currently, from our mates at the terrace. If you're watching live, you can see it. Again... Uh, nobody won. So last week I added um, a Grady Draws print. Grady does our artwork and he's a very, very talented artist. And then um, our friends at Osset United, uh, Neil Spoff, the uh, secretary down there, um, has also offered us two tickets to any home game that you wish to attend. So currently got a copy of FIFA 21, Terrace Mug, an exclusive Grady Draws print and uh, two tickets to any Osset Town home game. So if you're watching this live and you're expecting a phone call, um, we're going to ring somebody now. And how we're going to do it is we're going to put it on loudspeaker so you can catch it on my microphone. That's how much technology we've got on this podcast. And hopefully, if they answer with, um, and the winner was scored by Carl Cho, who came on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday, then they win the prize. Do you, so want, like, me to, do you want me to chuck a prize in as well? Oh, if you want, Fenners, yeah. If you want to chuck no, a prize I in. Got, I haven't got now, mate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, you could, you could, you could just post me, a, post me a snot rag. Somebody like that. <laughs> I've got, I've got one. Obviously, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll do you a nice. Um, I could do you a nice. Uh, hang on, one sec. Oh hello. Oh, it's getting tasty now. Yeah. Ga- ga- hey, ga- Gaz is thinking, how can I enter? How can I? Enter Gaz is going to phone his missus. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, literally, when I finish this podcast, I'm going to go sit in garden a minute and just have a word with myself because it's been an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, guys, we nearly didn't have a oh. podcast because we didn't set up the stream right. Yeah, exactly that as well. I thought I had a, I thought I had a t-shirt, a, a Brad Bobbley t-shirt. Oh, oh, oh that's to give away a surprise. We'd want that. Yeah, when Sir send does that, don't give it away. Anyway, so shall we give the person? Who... Oh, well done. What's he got? Everyone who loves Fenners is closed now. This is brilliant. Just try to subscribe, aren't they? Yeah, open it to Stone Island coat or something. Got that. Uh... Got that Liverpool t shirt if anyone's just any Leeds fans. Any Leeds fans go to Liverpool. <laughs> Listen, Christmas is coming up, you never know. Uh, oh, hey, Brad yeah, Bobbler, look at that. That's class. Yeah, that is good. That's good, that. So there that you go. Pro- Gaz proper wants that, look. I was going to say. As long as your initials are SB. Fine, we can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was sent for, uh, that was sent for, say, Ben Rama. Right, is it? Yeah, but he didn't want it. So. <laughs> <laughs> he gets he gets one every week, doesn't he? Because he's that good. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, he's true, making yeah. for fun. So sorry, anyway. Right, so let's give this individual a ring and let's hope that they get it right, and then we can end this terrible competition. So here we go. Pressure's on here, lads, isn't it again? Yeah. What's he got to say? 
Dude, That's bro. not a good start, is it? <laughs> Every week. <laughs> Boy, I'm for tea, lads. <laughs> oh, we're ringing. We're ringing, lads. We're ringing. Carl Schutt scored the winner with a minute left to go with tomorrow with his birthday. Yes! Yes! We have a winner. Josh Smith, congratulations. You are the winner of... A Saeed Ben Rama Brad Bobbley t shirt that Fenners has just chucked in, an exclusive Grady Draws print, a terrace mug that Paddy's going to buy, and a copy of FIFA 21 to any console that you desire, as long as it's not a new generation one, because we can't afford that. Awesome. Congratulations, mate. Uh, obviously, you'll have my number. If you want to send me your address, then we will get the stuff to you. Cheers. Thanks very much, Gary. No, no worries, mate. Nice one. Take it easy. Cheers. You too. Bye. That's it, lads. We have a winner. Yeah, uh, Mr. Have... Josh Smith wins. And he, he executed it quite well, to be honest, didn't he? I could hear him rustling the paper that he'd obviously written it down on when the phone rang. But fair play. Fair I play. like it. He drew out the suspense, didn't he? Is yeah. He or not, I like what he did. No, he's, he's done well there. He's done well there. Um, nice, I better nice not... and punchy, that, isn't it? Nice and punchy, that uh, little thing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll not mention I'll not mention the person wow. who are next on list will I that'll be uh, pretty pretty brutal so and then just watching all these followers just disappear off the stream now which is nice as well all the people oh, tuning God. in to see they're gonna win they <laughs> yeah pretty much mate pretty much uh, anyway before we move on to our favourite segment Shit House of the Week uh, in which some quite familiar faces uh, feature on the Shit House of the Week um, we better mention again one of our other fantastic sponsors here for every other week um Athletic Ben's Athletic Mention. Obviously, Athletic Ben's not here, but we'd like to mention the guys from The Athletic who come to support us. And uh, for this uh, early start to the season, you can get a subscription of The Athletic for just a quid, which is very cheap. They've got um, a lot of decent podcasts on there. Obviously, not as good as this, where the internet drops out all the time and there's loads of rattling and phone don't ring and all them other little, like, you know, idiosyncrasies, but they've got loads of good stuff on there and a team of extremely talented top writers, including our very own Sir Philip of A, uh, formerly of the YEP, but now of The Athletic, uh, giving us amazing Leeds coverage. Uh, ben picked a couple of articles out um, to go and check out. Uh, one was uh, Bamford under Bielsa, which is talking about Patrick Bamford's journey to playing under Bielsa, mentioning being left out by uh, teams and not being happy um, with certain managers and stuff like that. And also uh, one on Leicester's season so far. So go check out them articles uh, by various different writers. And you can get a subscription for a pound a month if you go to theathletic.com forward slash talking shut. So a big thanks to them again uh, and get amongst it. It is extremely good. Uh, no ads on there either. So you can, you know, when you can indulge in doing a bit of reading, that's your opportunity. So, moving on to shit house of the week for you, Fenners. I'm sure you've heard it before when you've listened many times before. We nominate um, a couple of people, but then one winner who has uh, plagued uh, plagued our week, upset us uh, for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, we give them a we give them an award that we haven't quite got round to buying and sending yet, but we'll get there. Uh, so, nominee number one. In a, in a first-time event, myself, for suggesting Patrick Bamford should get substituted in our WhatsApp group on uh, Friday night. Uh, Frank Lampard for saying he's been treated differently because he's an English manager to Big Six Club. Um, I've not actually seen that quote, so I can't give any context to it, but we'll have him in there. Uh, Tyrone Mings for manhandling Patrick Bamford off the floor after uh, stamping, not stamping, but falling on his ankle. And um, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank for... Um, his interesting punditry skills, shall we Shall we put politely? So I'm having that. So, lads, who do you think should win it? We'll leave Fenners out, obviously, because um, there's maybe some twisted loyalties here. So, oh, uh, no, no, we... no, no, I'd, I'd like to get involved. Oh, yeah, go on then, <laughs> Fenners. Yeah, great. Um, so, coming to you first and Rags, who do you think should win? Shit out of the week. Me, Frank Lampard, uh, Tyrone Mings, or Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank? Well, I, I've... Straight away, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're getting my vote as well, mate. Already. <laughs> Just because, uh, yeah, I remember, I remember seeing the comment, to be honest, and I thought it was just coming up to half time, and I'm thinking, we, we're the better team here. I don't think we need to change anything, to be honest. And I think I responded with that. I was like, no, we're all right. We're, we're doing well. 
Um, and then obviously, especially when the third one went in, I think I just texted in. I said, shit, have some for the week <laughs> for even thinking about it, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. so yeah. Um, I tell you what, the, the Mings incident, I think he's really, I think he's really looking at VAR and got involved in, in that as well. I mean, to grab a player literally who's clearly on the ground with some discomfort and to grab him by the scruff of his neck and pull him up in that manner um, in this era of VAR, I think it's, uh, I don't know, it was it was a dodgy one, but they didn't even look at it, did they? It was, it was really strange. Um, and for him to play in a, in a villa side that, you know, quite likes a bit of uh, bit of diving and everything like that. Why did he get so irate about a player that he thought had died? Which Bamford didn't, by the way. He, you know, he just he just trod on his uh, <laughs> daughter's having a bit of a. <laughs> she's way up past bedtime, and she's just decided to have a bit of a paddy. Right? Way past my bedtime. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just I'll just I'll, just, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> Uh, Paddy, who do you want to get to pad? I'm going to go you, mate. I think the other ones, I think. Hasselbank, I kind of switch off when he when he's on. He annoys me at the best. He annoyed me on the when he, would, he talked about Bamford and stuff. I just don't really switch on the way. Lampard doesn't really affect us at Leeds. And Mings, I'm quite glad he did it because it unleashed like some sort of hidden hulk in Patrick Bamford, didn't it? So, um, And plus, you're on the list, mate. So I think anybody else could be on that list and I'd still vote you. So it's, it's you, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks. And uh, Ben, is, um, do you have a? Do you know? Do you, do you want to vote for me as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can, yeah. Yeah, sound. So, uh, so it's it's unanimous then in in a first time event on Talking Show. I am shit house of the week. Congratulations. I feel well, different. Well. Thanks. Yeah. Um, won't be the last, mate. No, it certainly won't be the last for sure. <laughs> uh, right, moving on to, obviously, taking the tongue well out of the cheek and moving on to nicer things. Uh, former guest of the show, Tom uh, Clay, uh, obviously played with Paddy at uh, Tagcaster. Uh, him and his missus, Leah, sorry, I didn't catch your surname, but um, in the times that we've seen a lot with Marcus Rashford uh, talking about school meals for kids and things like that, and obviously the political uh, storm that has occurred off the back of that, uh, Tom and his uh, girlfriend have been offer offering... Um, kids free pack lunches uh, to the point of even delivering them themselves as well so um it's just plastered all across his social media so go check him out we'll retweet it when we get off and share it on our facebook and instagram and all that type of stuff but do you know what um doff of the cap to tom that's absolutely top class in these current times so um yeah well done tom. top top man he's open as well if you are if you if you are struggling or i know someone who is just drop him a message they're making the pat lunches, and yeah, he is delivering them as well between, I think, 12 and 2 o'clock, I believe, at the time slot he's doing it. So he's making them from scratch. He's funding it all, paying for himself. So, yeah, that's just what he's like. Good guy. So yeah, cool. so absolutely top class. Go check it out. And like I said, we'll um, retweet on our socials and all that type of stuff. Stuff. Uh, start wrapping up the show now. Um, thanks for everybody who brought in all the comments. Uh, but before we leave, we better hear from another one of our sponsors. Uh, and this one is the, the team who sent Fenners his personalised Sea Dogs Scarborough mug that you may have seen him drinking from. One person even commented saying, is it bottomless or is someone filling it up off camera? I'm acting. Uh, <laughs> like a, it's like a coronation street where they're pretending to... <laughs> <laughs> Like a, like a true professional. Uh, so if you want yourself uh, uh, your own personalised mug with Christmas coming up, and I've just seen a lovely little one they've done where it's like the back of a mum and a daughter or a dad and a son or a mum and a son or a dad and a daughter um, walking hand in hand towards the game wearing your team's colours, uh, go check them out um, at theterrorstore.com. With Christmas coming up, there's loads of great stuff on their mouse mats, cushions, all uh, personalised to your, uh, your team's lights. Plus, Sportswear are now sponsoring non-league teams, uh, and they're doing loads of good stuff for charity as well. So go check them guys out. They've been with us since the very beginning. They've supported us since we, we first started, uh, and the, the top, top lads who are you know, making waves in the uh, football apparel industry, amongst other things, but also uh, doing the right things as well at this time. They made a, a Marcus Rashford mug and uh, donated any takings towards the food banks. So... You know, um, top class again from, from them guys. Go check them out um, at terrorstore.com. Uh, and again, if you check out our socials, if you can't find them, we retweet loads of their stuff on there. Um, so after what feels like a complete shit show of a show, I'll be really honest from my point of view, uh, I have to thank 
uh, Fenners for his time on this uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, Fenners, uh, a massive thanks to for coming on uh, to the podcast and sprinkling it with a, an hint of professionalism and a little bit of snot. It's been an absolute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've enjoyed it, lads. It's uh, it's nice to just um, it's nice to just have a bit of a natter and uh, and and you know in a nice casual style. And uh, next time I will uh, certainly bring uh, my Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, uh, thanks, thanks again. Uh, keep up the uh, incredible work with Soccer AM. It's a staple of any football fan's diet. It's, it's absolutely class. Um, Big thanks to uh, Paddy and Raggy for joining me tonight. Uh, old Ben and Young Ben will be back next week. They're both uh, missing uh, through work commitments, I believe, this evening. Uh, again, a massive thanks to everybody who has tuned in. And if you've downloaded the podcast uh, afterwards, hopefully there'll not be as many uh, technical issues uh, as obvious on there. Um, please like, subscribe. Uh, I would normally say leave us a five-star review, but this one probably warrants a two, and two of them stars belong to Fenners. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, massive thanks to everyone who just tuned in. Uh, big thanks to all our sponsors, the Social Media the Terrace and the Athletic. And again, a massive thanks to Fenners for uh, taking time out to come and join us on uh, Talking Show. Uh, and that'll uh, be the end of that. So I'll see you there. Pleasure, guys. All the best. Thank you. See you soon.